hell is coming. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our show today, millions of American families are about to be financially devastated. I'm going to show you what's coming for the U.S. economy, and more importantly, why the government doesn't want you to know. Plus, if you're looking to make more money trading or supercharge your investment accounts, I'm going to show you how our subscribers are making a fortune and how you can too. Stay tuned, now let's head over to Bloomberg where we pick today's story up with a headline. As US retail sales rise by more than forecast in broad advance, as value purchases increase 0.4% in September after a 0.1% gain last month, giving us the impression that consumers are back in a big way, they're spending more money, and that the soft landing narrative is now actually a likely outcome. But this is exactly what the government wants you to think. And this is how the media is portraying it, and I'm going to show you why the actual financial devastation is coming, because wait until you see the actual data and what's really going on. The sales figures cap another likely quarter solid economic growth and consumer demand fueled by a hardy labor market. And yet, what do we continue to hear from company after company as they're looking at laying off, they're saying demand is down, they're cutting hours, and yet here we see once again the government telling us that the labor market is strong and robust, but something is missing in a big way. While the retail report does little to reverse expectations the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates by a quarter basis point next month, it adds to evidence that the economy shows scant signs so far of materially downshifting. And this is despite the fact we've seen the unemployment rate rise, we've seen continued unemployment claims stay elevated, and again, all the anecdotal evidence from the surveys and what we're hearing from companies suggesting that the economy is not as strong. But yet we get the government data from last month, and it says, wait a minute, everything is great, things are booming, except there's something in the report that the media is not covering. But when we look at what's really going on with retail sales, particularly when we adjust them for inflation by looking at what's called real retail sales, this shown in blue on a year-over-year -year rate change against the unemployment rate in red, what we can note is that real retail sales have been negative for the past two years. And in fact, despite the headline data, what we see is real retail sales still remain negative. And that's to be expected because what you see is this rising trend in unemployment. As people hit the unemployment line, they naturally have less money to spend and yet they still have to deal with inflation they're dealing with higher insurance costs higher fuel costs energy costs interest expense on their debt they just don't have as much money so they naturally have to cut their discretionary spending and we can look back to the global financial crisis and we can see the same effect here as more people hit the unemployment line stay there well real retail sales declines it happened again in 2000 as we see a decline in real retail sales actually led the advance in unemployment but that's not the only issue that's facing U.S. consumers despite this robust labor market. And what we see is real retail sales against the delinquency rate on credit card loans. That's shown in red. And what we note is that as the delinquency rate rises, well, real retail sales falls. And this makes perfect sense because as people enter delinquency, credit card companies don't say, hey, we see you're behind. Let's increase your credit limit so you can borrow more. What they do is they decrease the credit limit down and say, hey, you know what? You're tapped out here. We don't want to give you any any more credit and since Americans mostly like to buy on credit with money they don't have to buy things they don't need well all of a sudden they're not buying those things anymore and we see real retail sales decline just as we did again during the global financial crisis and while we see the delinquency rate remains relatively low compared to past cycles what we can note is just that small rise and this is again a testament to how weak the u.s economy is you can see the impact on real retail sales which have been again negative for the past two years and this is really bad for a lot of small businesses who are being squeezed at the margin in fact recent reports suggest that small employers are being forced to lay people off because they just don't have enough demand. And eventually that backfeeds. It'll hit mid-sized employers and eventually large employers, just as the survey data is suggesting. But what we're not seeing is an outsized number in, of course, the unemployment data. Well, at least not yet. But the reason the government doesn't want you to know this is because they want you to keep spending because the idea is if you believe everything's good and the labor market's strong and that there's spending going on, well, you need to get out there and spend too. And if enough of that happens, well, everything will work out just fine. 
But the data showed so-called control group, which feeds into the government's calculation of good spending for gross domestic product, surged 0.7% in September. And I want you to think about the timing of this because what's coming next month? Well, that is, the course, the presidential election. And what do you want is the data to look as good as you can, particularly if you're the incumbent party. So now, all of a sudden, what we're seeing in, the, of course, the retail control group is the GDP data is going to look good. So here you see coming out from the media, from the government, saying, look, real retail sales is good. We're seeing demand here. GDP growth is going to show a better number than most expect. But that's not just the half of it. Stay tuned, as this is the strongest data now in three months. The measure excludes food services, auto dealers, building material stores, and gasoline stations. And figures issued late last month by the Bureau of Economic Analysis showed wages and salaries unadjusted for price changes, increased 0.5% in August, the most in three months, and suggesting consumers have the wherewithal to spend. So everything, again, keeps looking better. Incomes are going up, spending is going up, GDP is going up, except when you get to the actual truth here, because it is normal at this stage in the cycle for wages to go up, because there's something else that's going down to offset that. And job growth in September was the strongest in six months with employers adding more than a quarter million jobs. And here's the evidence. When we look at average hourly earnings of production and non-supervisory employees, this shown in blue on a year-over-year -year rate of change against average weekly hours of production and non-supervisory employees, what do we see going into a recession? Is that wage growth tends to rise, but what's being offset here is hours work. So why you see employers say, well, we gave you a bigger raise, we just actually cut your hours work. What you know is our total income is actually in decline. You see that happen again going into the dot-com bubble. We see the same effect in the global financial crisis. And look what's happening now. The government's saying, hey, wait a minute, wage growth is starting to accelerate again but notably look at the trend in hours work and so this is all the evidence that we need to suggest that what's going on in the retail sales data just doesn't actually make any sense and for good reason it's unadjusted and not only are the retail figures unadjusted for price changes that is inflation they also largely affect purchase of goods which comprise a relatively narrow share of the overall consumer outlays Data later this month will provide more details on the September inflation adjusted spending on goods and services. But something that should be surging higher is your trading account or even your investment account. Look at this trade. It's been on the books for just over a month. It's up 24.86%. And this is something that if you would have signed up for a 30-day free trial, you could have jumped on this. And how did we know? How did we tell our subscribers? Well, we back-tested our reports because what we do is look at machine position every day across a broad range of stocks commodities, bonds, and even currencies. And when we see the machines deeply off size and we see price rally against them, it flags on a report. And now that we have back-tested data, we're gonna make some big improvements to the report to make it even easier for you to take advantage of these high probability trades. And look at today, that trades up even more. You could be making a fortune right now and you only need to sign up and it's 30 days free. Here you get the daily report, you get the tradable signals, you get my opinion on the best trades. We did a full back test. So we validated that our research, our report works we give you stop loss levels we track all the trades we give you a weekly update on the positions and more importantly you can fully duplicate everything again 30-day free trial links in the description below start making money beat the machines we show you how to do that because let's take a look at what's really underneath the covers here of this retail sales report is on an unadjusted basis retail sales fell a shocking 7.5 percent month over month so remember we go back to the previous screen here and what do we say the data says it was up 0.4%. Now, could you imagine if the government would have printed a minus 7.5% month over month, the what kind of pandemonium that would be in the stock market? It would send stocks, of course, crashing, interest rates falling. And what was the reaction we got today? Stocks up bonds down, which is exactly what the government wants. You know, think about the Fed's position here. They did a half a basis point cut. The market said, you're gonna cut more. The Fed said, nah, we're not sure we're going to. Interest rates immediately went down, of course, leading into that Fed meeting, and then they went up. That's exactly what the Fed wants you to see. But they also want you to go out and spend because if the word got out, the spending was crashing, guess what other people would start to do? Stop spending. And we know, of course, when spending declines, 
lines. What else goes with it? It's right, it's the labor market. And this was the biggest positive September seasonal adjustment in history. So if you're wondering how we got from minus seven and a half to plus 0.4, well, that's a government at work making sure that the data looks good, particularly going into the election here. And there's some other evidence that says the economy is far weaker than most believe and that the seasonally adjusted retail sales data is highly inaccurate as U.S. industrial production declines on strike and hurricane effect. A 0.3 decrease in production in factories, mines and utilities followed a downwardly revised 0.3% gain a month earlier. And remember last month, we saw this really big number in industrial production we said wait a minute this is not going to hold because one thing we've noted lately is the accuracy of the government data has been getting worse and worse are so they putting out these really nice numbers only to see them downwardly revised month after month we're seeing that effect here in industrial production manufacturing output dropped 0.4% after a sizable there you see downward revision in the previous month don't worry about the headline you can just revise it later when nobody is looking Mining energy extraction slid 0.6%, depressed by hurricanes Francine and Helene. Output at utilities increased for the first time in three months. And yet the Fed's report showed weaker production of motor vehicles, furniture, and textiles during the month. Output of business equipment, while restrained by drop in aircraft, was also held back by weaker production of industrial and information processing equipment. And what you see here is a decline in demand in the industrial base. And all that leads to is more and more unemployment. You talk about why we're going to see financial devastation in many American households, it's the retail sales data. It's telling us consumers are tapped out. Where they spend less, companies lay off. And then look at the manufacturing side. When people spend less, you manufacture less. Those people are going to lose their jobs too. And it's only going to snowball going forward. But again, government doesn't want you to know this, particularly in advance of the election. And here we look at industrial production on a year-over-year -year rate of change against the unemployment rate. And you can see throughout history, declines in industrial production lead to a rise in the unemployment rate each and every time. We're being told right now that the unemployment rate hit a peak and is only going down. The economy is going to boom. And what do we see? Industrial production for about the last year has been negative at zero on a best rate, but still slightly negative, suggesting more layoffs are coming just as the survey data suggests. And when we look at real retail sales against industrial production with the real retail sales in red, what we note is sales lead production. It makes perfect sense. If people aren't buying, you don't need to produce. What we see here is real retail sales negative for about a continuous two-year period, finally bringing down industrial production. What this is suggesting is inventory levels are rising, things aren't moving off shelves, and eventually you do not need as many workers, and that is a huge problem. The government doesn't want this to happen before the election. They don't want people to know. The problem is it's coming, and in a big way. The Institute for Supply Management's latest measure of factory activity shrank in September for a six-month, reflecting weak orders and declining employment. The U.S. has lost 34,000 manufacturing jobs in the past two months, with millions likely to lose their job in the year to come. And the number of factory workers on payrolls now stands at a two year low. U.S. producers are also contending with tepid export markets and higher borrowing costs that have restrained factory output. Domestic consumer demand, however, remains solid, which helped boost consumer goods production for a second month. But now we talk about the personal savings rate, because we heard this from one of the Fed speakers the other day. They said, well, consumers are still draining down their spending or savings, and that's going to lead to, of course, an increase in spending. But what we're knowing is the exact opposite is happening. Consumers are starting to realize that the labor market isn't that great that business isn't that good and the outlook for them losing their job or getting their hours cut is increasing and that means people start saving when they do of course real retail sales go down here you can see the savings rate in red as it rises real retail sales shown in blue goes down you see that happen and in going into each recession here we know that the odds that there's a big turnaround in demand here from consumers is highly unlikely as we continue to see cash strapped consumers being forced to look and save more against a weakening economy. But again, this isn't something the government wants you to know because it is a factor of the election coming up. But there's a second factor. If you believe the economy is good, you go out and spend like it's good. And if enough people do that, well, maybe you get lucky and things turn around. But I think this time it's too late.
The Fed's report, meanwhile, also showed capacity utilization at factories, a measure of potential output being used, dropped to 76.7%. The overall industrial utilization rate eased to 77.5%. Now, what that means is what percentage of a factory is being utilized, and rarely do you get to 100%. Usually, when you get to 80% or so, you're seeing a lot of hiring, a lot of new shifts added. That the problem is when it goes the other direction, well, you don't need as many workers. And here you can see capacity utilization against the unemployment rate, that's shown in red. You see a near mirror of each other when things go wrong as capacity utilization falls. Well, the unemployment rate rises. That happens going into each and every recession. And here we can note that rising unemployment rate unlikely to change as capacity utilization continues to fall. And that takes us to what's going to devastate U.S. families, and that is rising unemployment. As U.S. jobless claims drop after jump due to the storms in the week prior, but that's only what the headline is telling you. And now we see initial claims at 241,000, down 19,000 from the prior week, which is fantastic. The good news is continued unemployment claims only rose 9,000, indicating a lot of people filing initial claims are going back to work. But one of the key things we're watching, if the continued claims rise and continue to rise, well, it's dangerous for the economy. You get this number over 2 million and bad things are coming. As the damage done by Hylene and Hurricane Milton, which hit the southeast two weeks later, has left many people unable to work and possibly unable to file benefits, suggesting these numbers are going to get worse. And that means claims will continue to fluctuate in the near term, although economists anticipate this lumpiness will eventually subside. Up until this point, weekly filings were subdued, in part because the number of Americans losing their jobs was relatively low, and that's the risk we face. All it takes is an inflection point. You get too many people on unemployment, they're spending less money, and next thing you know, it reverberates through the economy, and you find yourself in a recession, and that leads to absolute financial destruction for many, many millions of households. And at this point, I don't think there's anything the Fed can do to stop it. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.